My first upload to YouTube, um, as you'll see on this channel, were videos around ACDC, um, ACDC Ultimate to be exact, um, which is a software suite for editing and processing um, your images. Um, it's a war developer, it's a digital asset manager, an organizational tool, and it is also a layer editor. Now, before I ever contemplated starting a YouTube channel, I uploaded some tutorials for ACDC. Um, the purpose being I was having conversations with people in the ACDC support forums, the user forums, and it was to illustrate points um, in relation to things we were talking about in the use of ACDC. These videos remain some of the most widely watched videos on my channel. Um, because of that, I have considered um, whether I should be making more of them, but I feel it would be a little bit dishonest to do so. Um, despite the fact that I have had a few requests by um, private message asking me when I'm going to upload more videos, and they are actually some of my most watched videos. But I'm going to tell you now the reason why I stopped using ACDC, but you might still want to. Okay, so if you're not familiar, ACDC is a suite of tools, um, not unlike Adobe Suite, um, but photography orientated. You can buy them in all one package, which is the ultimate package, or you can buy them individually. So we have the management tool, which is referred to as a digital asset manager. Um, we would have the raw developer, which is referred to as develop. And we would have the layer editor, which is referred to as edit within the ATDC world. Only ultimate has them all, but you can buy them all individually. Um, now I used ACDC Studio, um, actually ACDC Ultimate, for a number of years, and I was very, very happy with it. Um, the pros of ACDC, the number one thing ACDC has going for it is the Digital Asset Manager. It is by far and away much better than Lightroom. It is faster, it is easier to organize your images, it's easier to find things, it's more importing and exporting, it simply monitors your folders, it shows you um, thumbnails, and it pulls in what you need whenever you want to. It creates a sidecar file with the information like tags and things that you might want. And you, you can find and organize things faster in ACDC than you could ever hope to in uh, Like One of the big things about ACDC that I thought was really good is if you were, for example, cut and paste a folder from one location to another that was full of images, ACDC will do that faster for you within the program than Windows will do it within Explorer or it could up until when I was using it. The raw develop module in ACDC is absolutely outstanding. Um, it's the best I've ever used. I thought it was fantastic. Um, it has some innovative tools, one being the skin softening. Now, no, I'm not really much for skin softening, but if you just want to give just that little touch because you've used an over sharp lens, um, the skin softening slider on the ACDC was excellent up until I was using it. I stopped using the ACDC at ultimate 10, maybe 11. The edit module, which is similar to Photoshop or the edit module similar to raw development Lightroom, um, wasn't so good. It was good, but it wasn't great. Uh, it was halfway house between what Lightroom can do and what Photoshop can do. But within ACDC, if you've got Photoshop, I used to have CS6, that was the last off-the-shelf package version I bought. Um, you can simply link it to the ACDC Digital Asset Manager and it can send it off to TIFF and you edit it, you bring it back very similar to how you would like them. Um, I used to use ACDC in conjunction with Affinity Photo, um, also an excellent kit and very cheap um, for those little things that I just couldn't manage to do within the edit module. So, singing the praises of ACDC, so why did I give up on it? Um, why did I leave it after quite a number of years? Um, the answer was I bought a little the camera. Um, I bought the Fuji XF10. Um, because I frankly couldn't justify the cost of a Rego JR3 despite being a Pentaxian. Um, as a little pocket camera to carry around with me and always have on me, but of course I haven't got at this moment. Um, and when I loaded the images into ACDC, it didn't recognise the raw files and there was no support for it and nobody seemed to know when it was going to come. Um, now I know if you are familiar with the raw files, you're probably thinking, why didn't you just run them through the tool that Lightroom, that Adobe give you for free and convert them to DNGs? Two reasons. One, time. Two, it was an extra compromise too far as we were only making some compromises with ACDC that I wasn't really overly happy with. So the compromises I was making with ACDC, firstly, lens profiles. 
I shoot Pentax primarily for uh, most of my work. Um, a lot of lens profiles were not available, especially for the K1. Now, ACDC pulled its lens information from an open source database called LensFun, which I think is an excellent decision. Um, reduces the resources they need, it's community managed, it updates rapidly, and um, there's new stuff going on all the time. I myself um, submitted loads of K1 profiles to the LensFun database, hoping to see the pull through to ACDC. Well, actually, ACDC were not pulling the updates through. Even on a full update of the software, the updated lens profiles weren't coming through. Now, I'm somebody who likes to mess around and try and work out what we can do about this, because you can download the lens from the database. So I worked out a way that I could install them myself, and I would do that quite regularly as updates came through um, from the lens from the database. I would manually install them. And there's a post, I think, that I made over on the ACDC user forums explaining how to do this. I'll try and link to it. Um, when I did the editing for this video. So that was one problem solved. That was okay, I was living with that. The other problem that I had was that the way Pentax writes the lens information to the metadata, or the exit data, sorry, of the image file is a little bit different to how other manufacturers do it. Actually, lots of manufacturers do it differently. But ACDC never took account of how Pentax did it. So lens information was always blank. Now I worked out using the EXIF tool, which is a free open source software, a little process where I can quickly copy the information from the field where Pentax automatically stored it over to the field where ACDC wanted to see it. So how was that problem solved? But that's the point. When I was uploading stuff, uh, images, downloading them from my SD card into ACDC, I was having to always run that process which I ran it from the command file. Um, I'll link to another forum post where I explain how to do that. Um, so it would update the lens information. And that was great. It was quite fast. But it sort of compromises the savings and time you're making on ACDC down. So you add that on. You add the continually looking for lens profile updates and messing around with that. Um, you add on calibrating monitors, which is something I do quite regularly. And then you start to talk about having to convert the raw file format from the raw file of the XF10 over to the uh, format of DNG using the Adobe Converter. And it was just one step too far for me. I just, I just had enough really. I wanted a simpler life. So I decided to take a trial of Lightroom. I imported my image catalog, um, my folder basically, I keep all of it, my images. And yeah, it's slower, there's no doubt about it, but if I want to find something out, there's loads of tutorials on YouTube, plenty of blog posts that'll explain it. Um, I don't have to compromise with lens profiles, they're all there. I don't have to worry about um, support for raw files, they're pushed out constantly, everything's updating all of the time. And as I've moved over back to Lightroom, and, well, I've never used Lightroom previously, but I moved back over to Adobe products, having started to use Bridge and Photoshop. Um, I see no reason to leave. Um, I've started using Premiere Pro, I use InDesign a little bit, I use Illustrator a little bit, I have been using my old CS6 versions of those. Uh, you get them all as part of the suite. And I know some people will say, well, this is to be expected from ACDC because it's a once a year update program. Um, top tip if you want to buy ACDC, it's all cheaper in late August, early September because the new version comes out mid September to early October. They'll normally let you do an upgrade price for the difference anyway, so you only do it if you think there's something worth doing it for. Anyway, that's a bit by the by. But I wasn't actually paying for the annual license, I was paying for the subscription, which was about seven or eight pounds a month, just slightly cheaper than Adobe. Um, photography pack, photographer package, not enough, just a little bit. Um, not enough to make any difference to me personally. So I wanted to get regular updates. It was one of the reasons I subscribed to a subscription and they just weren't pushing these things out. Um, now, I think, I still follow them on YouTube, despite the fact that I don't use the software anymore. I think they've really upped their game lately. They're putting together lots of good videos with uh, Alec Watson. Um, the user community seems to be growing a little bit. And I don't understand why they don't get considered more as um, alternatives to Adobe for people who don't want to uh, use Adobe. If I was only shooting Pentax, purely Pentax, I probably would have stayed where I am because if you know anything about Pentax cameras, the raw file can be set to DNG, so you never want to have any compatibility issues with anything. 
Um, so yeah, I would say if you're a hobbyist, even if you're a pro, actually, you should really look at ACD and say, if you don't want to get onto the Adobe subscription cycle, um, or you're unhappy with Adobe, or you haven't any issues with Adobe whatsoever, um, it's great software. It just had a few little compromises that I personally couldn't take anymore. Having said that, somebody asks for an alternative, they're always the first software program I have in, um, and it brings them for an alternative to Lightroom. They're the closest to Lightroom. Um, as far as organizational features are concerned, the role developer is excellent. If you took the subscription package, you used to bundle in a video developer, but it was very basic. I think it's been updated quite a lot lately, so I don't know how good or bad that is. Um, but if you need something for video, it's definitely worth looking at and seeing where you want to be. Um, but I found it couldn't do basic things like rotate images and stuff like that when I used it previously. So there won't be any more ACDC tutorials on this, on this channel. I won't remove the ones that are already there because it appears from the fact that it gets so many views um, in any given month, it's still one of my top view videos as there's always an ACDC video. Um, so I won't remove them because obviously somebody's finding them useful, um, but there won't be any more from me. I've got no plans to make any more ACDC videos unless I end up going back to the software at some point, which to be honest, I wouldn't write off. Um, if I didn't need the full Adobe suite, I might be tempted to go back at some point because yeah, the speed, the speed is absolutely awesome. Um, it was, that was its main feature. Um, anyway, if you've tried ACDC um, and you've tried Adobe, feel free to use the comment section to talk about what you think is better, um, or why you think it's better, or why you think ACDC is there. Have they addressed the problems I had? Um, again, I'd be interested to know. Probably not interested enough to try and move back because there's no pain in staying with Adobe. I'm quite comfortable with it now. Anyway, speak to you soon.